Hello and welcome to Singular Stars. In today's video I'm going to be looking at City of the Big Shoulders, specifically the solo variant that is available on Board Game Geek that was written by Mark Hunter. Um, it allows you to play a four player game by yourself with the AI controlling three players. So I'm going to um, initially talk through the setup of the, the solo variant itself. Um, I won't talk about the setup of um, City of the Big Shoulders per se. I won't talk through the instructions for City of the Big Shoulders, but I will talk through how the solo variant works. If you're interested in a um, an instruction video on how to set up and play City of the Big Shoulders, and in fact a, a walkthrough of City of the Big Shoulders, I would highly recommend Heavy Cardboard's playthrough, um, and I'll stick a link for this just up above. So in this playthrough um, I will talk through how the solo variant works, how to set it up, I'll talk through how um, how the rules work and then as I'm going along I'll, I'll explain what's what's happening. So for setup you set up as per the normal four player game rules the only difference being that you don't need to include any of the goal cards they're not included in the variant. Um, once you've got the four player game set up on the main board, you then choose your um, your, your player colour is blue um, by, by default in, in the variant. You pick your company, you set your power price, you set your um, your attraction rating and then once you've done all those you can then set up the the solitaire board. So over on this screen over here we have the solitaire board. Now the, the instructions for the variant come with uh, a number of print-offs that you can make that um, you can then use to help help in your game. There's a, a basic company organizer that you use to look after the three AI players' uh, shares. The AI player is only interested in the shares that they have. They don't keep track of money, they don't run any factories, uh, they don't worry about managers or salesmen um, their only their only impact as part of the uh, as part of the way they play is on the main board so they will impact and change the main board but their their own board is merely uh, a case of um, what shares they own what shares they have available um, and the companies that they are running um, so as we go through I'll explain uh, more about how it works I've randomly selected three companies uh, I just drew them from a bag. Um, so we have Cracker Jack, we have DBH, and we have uh, Florsham. Um, so uh, once you've randomly selected, you need to set the par price. And to do that, uh, you roll a D6. And if you roll a 1 to 2, then it's $35. If you roll 3 to 5, then it's $45. And if you run... Not forty-five dollars. Sorry, forty dollars. I've got a typo. There's a typo in this uh, in this document. Uh, and then if you roll a six, it's fifty dollars. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, I'm actually using this this app called Sophie's Dice that I have up on screen here. Um, and so I actually have a custom D6. Oh, wrong one. Still the wrong one. Here we go. If I pick up. So if you see here, it has on it the 235s, the, the 340s, and the 150. So I'm going to use that in order to set my par value for these three companies. Um, so all, all the way through the game, uh, the AI player either uses a combination of dice or a standard deck of cards in order to make, um, in order to make random decisions. Uh, for this playthrough, I'm using... Um, some custom dice through this through this app that should hopefully allow us to be able to see clearly what's what's going on. Um, you don't have to use when you're doing it yourself. You don't have to use an app. Um, I mean, the instructions themselves say to use a deck of cards, but actually, you could use something like Alexa's random number generator or or some other means of choosing um, from a range of, of random choices. So let's set the power value. So first of all, let's set Cracker Jack. So Cracker Jack. We're going to set as 35. 
And the appeal for Cracker Jack is the standard appeal that they, they would have normally, which is one. So I'm actually looking that up on a little cheat sheet I have. Because they are set up after me, they go underneath me. So DBH. It's a $50 par price. Now you'll note the AI doesn't track money, so it isn't actually paying anything to do this. But at the same time, um, there's, there's, there's no money being moved around. If at any point the AI needs to pay me or my company for something, then the money comes from the bank. And if I ever need to pay the AI, I just pay into the bank. Okay, so DBH, uh, their appeal is one. So they're going to go underneath us as well. And then finally, Florsham, their appeal is two. And we're going to set their par value as being $40. So they've come in at the same level as me. Their appeal is two. So they're going to sit there. Okay, so um, so we've got all the uh, companies set up. Do we need to do anything else for this setup? Um, so each company, uh, each AI player has their has their chairman share. Um, then all the rest of the shares they have available are over here. At the end of the game. Uh, any shares that haven't been purchased by a, another player um, are awarded to uh, the player who owns the chairman shares. So um, if Cracker Jack, at the end of the game, still has 60% of its shares uh, unpurchased, they go into the uh, into the red player's treasury. And so when we're calculating the red player's score, uh, that's going to inflate their score quite a bit. So we will need to keep on top of the AI players uh, company ownership and make sure that that we we are taking we're buying shares from those companies um, uh, as, as often as as is sensible um, okay so we've set the par values we've set the appeal we have our companies chosen um, so something it's worth pointing out um, you need to be aware of what type of goods your company produces. Obviously, the share tokens don't tell you, although you can guess from Florsham that they're going to do shoes. Um, so it is it is important that either you have it written down somewhere. I've got a cheat sheet here of a couple of page sizes that just describe each of the different companies, what their appeal is, what their good type is. So um, I definitely recommend getting something like that just to help you with the... With the uh, with some of the um with some of the bands okay so let's push on um first round is the shares round and this plays slightly differently to normal in that um the ai player always has a priority deal so we're going to always run through uh red through yellow through green then myself um, and we all get one turn, um, and in your turn you may buy as many shares as you want, uh, but the standard purchasing rule of you may not purchase shares in companies that you've sold this turn will still apply. So we're going to go through, roll against the table, and look up depending on what the year we're playing in um, is to find out how many shares are being bought. And then we are going to, when it comes around to, to my turn, I can buy as many shares as I like. Um, but let's let's start off with the red player. So, um, we have some dice for this. So it's just a couple of D6s. So we'll hit this and pick these up. Oh, there we go. And so, uh, on this table over here, um, we can see it's 1875. We've rolled here five. So the red player is going to buy one share. And in order to determine what share they're going to buy, you simply pick randomly from the uh, from all the companies that are currently out there. So we've got four companies out there, and um, you just want to pick between the four. So let's roll a let's roll a d six. 
Um, as we've got one here, I could I could generate a custom D4, but I can't be bothered. Um, let's say one, two, three, four, five or six, we re-roll. Let's take this die, and two. So, red has bought a share in DBH. Again, red doesn't have to pay any money, there's no money that moves around, it's just you move the share over. If the AI player was going to buy two shares, then ideally they'd buy the um, preference share, but otherwise they'll just buy standard shares um, from two different companies. Um, the plus one, minus one you see on some, uh, some of the cells, that means they're going to sell a share first and then buy a share. Um, obviously, there's no money being changed hands, but if you sell the share, you still have the impact of changing the, the share price on the share track. Um, and obviously there is the, the possibility that the AI player will set up a new company in turn in rounds three and four. Uh, we'll, we'll hit that if we, uh, if we get to it. Okay, so uh, yellow player is next. So again, one, two, three, and four. Five and six is re-roll, and we get a five. So let's re-roll, and five again, and that is a that's a three. Oh, no, that's unfortunately moved that man, but that was a three. So yellow is buying a Florsham. And then green is going to buy a, a Cracker Jack. So no one's bought any of my shares. Now if they had bought any of my shares, we'd take the money from the bank and pay the, pay the asking price for them and put that into the company. Okay, so my turn. And I have $55 remaining. So I could buy into... I could buy into one of the AI companies. It is quite tempting. But they've all bought evenly between themselves. So I'm going to buy one of my own shares. Here we go. So that's going to be um, $40. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so if I had enough money, I could buy shares in another company at this, at this point as well, but I don't. Uh, so that's me done. So that's the share round done. So next round is the building round. So I take, I deal three to myself. And then um, nine to the AI. Hmm. I appear to be. One short, let me just see. Yep, there it is. Uh, right, um, so there's 90 AI. Uh, it doesn't need to be grouped up in any in any particular order. And the way it's going to play is, um, for, for my decision, I play the same as usual. So I look at the three, I pick one, um, I discard one, and I save one for next round. For the AI player, you just take, simply take all the nine that you've drawn this time, and you're going to draw three to play onto the board, three to um, discard, and three to save for the next round. So the next round, you'll draw six um, buildings for the AI player, add them to the three that you've got, shuffle them up, and again, play three, keep three, discard three. So it's um, fairly straightforward, and it's just a, a random choice. So I've shuffled those up, and we play them down to each one of those. Then I'm going to take the top three here, and we're going to place those over here. So we've got them, and then the other three here, ah, the other three here, I'm going to discard over here. Okay, so... Let's have a look at what buildings we've got and start making a choice. Hmm. Now for this first round, it would be really nice if I could get 
both factories running so I can get my extra partner out. But I think realistically, given the absolute lack of brands available in the resource area, uh, these two are brown by the way, if it's not very clear in the video, uh, there are there's a brown, a black and a pink in the $10 uh, bin, there's two blues and a brown in the $20 bin, and then a black, a blue and a pink in the $30 bin. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to be able to get enough brands out to do a double factory run, which I think would probably be quite unlikely um, in the first round anyway. So I'm pretty much keen on getting... Um, I'm keen on getting resources. I mean, that might not be bad because it allows me to buy my odd colour and a brown each round. Only $10. Um, increase my appeal, which is okay, but it does add two workers in, which obviously would be nice. And then here we've got a plus one goods, $20. So obviously, you know, a minimum of $80. That's a $60 profit every time I take that spot. Which isn't bad. Um, I know better ones will be coming out later. Um, but having that spot around... I don't really need it. See, that's the thing. In the early game, my power value of 40, I can only go up two spots. So, effectively, I just need to sell one good this round, and I'll go up two spots. So, I could... Um, I could take that, and that would guarantee that I would be able to pay my dividend out. But... Um, I think I might need to concentrate more on actually getting my factory set up this round. I think maybe I'm going to get this one down. I think this is going to just give me some kind of alternative in case the AI is being a bit hobble to me. I will keep uh, I will keep this one and I will discard this one. Uh, it does mean that I'm not putting down any workers this round. I wonder if that's going to come back to haunt me. Hmm. Okay, so I've chosen my building. Um, let's turn over the, the ones that the AI has selected. Okay, so we've got three workers to be placed. All fingers and thumbs. So... That is definitely interesting. So we've got a capital capital gain spot there that might be useful to me. Um, at a twenty dollar sorry, a ten dollar discount. Um that that does that could be quite useful indeed. Um I wonder if I could afford the two brown one. That would be that would be pretty powerful. Because um, that would also give me an automer. So then all I would need to have to do is to be able to afford a worker, which would be $30. So that would be. So that would be $60, that would be $90. Obviously, I've got more than that. $10 to get the two rounds. So that would be a hundred dollars. I'm leaving with sixty dollars left in order to buy some blues. Yeah. Okay. So there's definitely uh, some strategy there. Okay. So next round is the action phase. So um, the action phase is slightly different in that instead of going in um, the order of the players over here. You actually go in the order of appeal from from at the top. So um, we're going to go through and um, we are going to draw um, from a deck of cards. So for 1875, we're going to use the Ace of Diamonds through the King of Diamonds. And depending on what card we draw for each player, for each um, partner, that's the space work that we're going to. Um, that's the space we're going to 
play the AI player's partner. The They will then carry out the effects of that space, but only if the effect is going to impact the, the board. For the most part, uh, any space that has an impact outside of the main board isn't going to actually do anything. So if they were to play here on the worker space, they would um, take four workers off the space, put them back in the supply, and that would be it. If they were to place here, they would increase their appeal by one. If they place here or here, then nothing happens. If they were to place here, they would pick at random one of the um, one of the capital assets, take them off, and, and play on as usual. If they were to land on one of the player spaces, if they land on one of mine, then I do still get my benefit paid to me by my bank, by the bank. Um, otherwise, um, they will take resources uh, from Haymarket. If they do, they place them over here on the cleanup phase. And when the cleanup phase happens, they go back into Haymarket again. So it's as though they've taken them off to put on their factory and then they've used them as part of their factory running. Uh, they don't take an Automa. They um, will take a capital gain again, capital asset off the off the track, but they won't actually do anything with it. And they will take um, two different resources that you pick at random. Uh, they also have uh, that that space doesn't do anything for. Oh, so that space will pay out a dividend. So if um, if they land on this, they'll pay out a dividend. But obviously, it's only if I actually own any of their shares because they don't pay cash out to any of the other players and this space doesn't do them doesn't do anything for them because they don't take any cash okay um so we'll we'll play on from there and then if any new cards buildings come out that, that we need to look at we'll we'll run through that but let's um let's actually have a look through it playing playing on so the first player to go is uh Florsham. so rather than rolling rather than drawing from deck of cards as I said earlier, I've got some dice. So in this case, because it's ace through king and it's just one suit, I have a d13 here that has each of the different possible hands on it. Um, so we're going to roll this for each player and use that to determine uh, which space they're going to go into. So let's start off with Florsham. Give that a roll. And we have a 10. A 10 of diamonds is the Autumn spot. <sighs> They don't take anything for that, so it's just going to block that spot out. The so next is me, and I am going to. Um, what's the odds of them getting a jack of diamonds? I mean, it must be pretty low, yeah. I am going to buy one worker. It's not the end of the world if they do, is it? Because uh, I could always go to that spot and pay. Mm, maybe not. All right, so I paid thirty dollars to the bank. So if I have to pay, I just pay off to the bank. I don't pay to the players. Um, so the company paid thirty dollars. So it wasn't even it wasn't even a player, was it? It was uh, to the bank anyway. And I take a worker. Okay, that's my turn done. Next is Crackerjack. They are going to go. Don't be the Jack of Diamonds. Don't be the Jack of Diamonds. Four diamonds. They're going to come here. I'm going to take four of these off. So. Going there first has paid off for me. And then finally it's DBH. And they are going to go. They're also going to go. Yeah. And they're going to strip those workers off. Okay. Um. So next, we go back round in appeal order again. So it is Forsham. And we have a, a ten of diamonds, which you can't do. So we go again. We get a king. So this is Forsham. And that space doesn't do anything. Uh, oh, no, no, it's me. Aha. So I can come here. I pay ten dollars less for this one, so that is only sixty. So that is going to be 
40 change from the 100. And um, I'm going to take that and put that over here. That gets me an Automa. It's nice. And paid my 60. I got my asset. I've got my Automa. Okay, I'll push that down. Okay. And then it's Crackjack. Just the Queen. So that's on my spot. So I'm going to get ten dollars. And the AI player is going to uh, take two different colours. So let's do it just using a. A D six. Um, all right. So, uh, so let's. So for in Haymarket, uh, one is black, two is pink, three is brown, four is blue. We roll if uh, we get five or six. We get a one. So that's a black. And then one or two is pink. Three or four is blue. Uh, is brown. Five or six is blue. Six, that's a blue. That's two different colours. Taken off there. Um, so that is that. And then DBH. Right, I'll die again. And DBH gets a... Also gets a king. Well... And that is the um, that's the action phase. Oh, this should have been down here. Okay, so next we are going to the operating phase. So again, we go through in appeal order. Um, and so and so, look, I might have forgotten something, but I don't remember what it. Is. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Um, so in the operating phase, um, what we're going to do is we're going to be rolling 2d6s against this table. So you look at the year that you're in and roll uh, and, and look up against the, the, the 2d6, what the total value you've got is. So the way you, the way you read this chart, uh, the number is the uh, total amount generated. So you're then going to pay that out as a dividend um, to the human player if they own any of the any of the shares. You will also use that total value to work out what the share price change should be. Um, if the number is in uh, bold, then that means they fill up a full uh, desire track tile to the... the yeah. If the value is in bold, then they will fill up the right hand most desire track for the type of good that they are playing. If it's not in bold, they will fill up half of the track rounded down. Um, so for the companies we've got, we've got Cracker Jack, who are fulfilling wheat, and then we've got Florsham and DBH, who are both fulfilling shoes. So... Um, that's that bit. If there is a star, then they need to increase their appeal by one. If there's a cube or a number of cubes, they will take that many cubes. Um, they'll take those cubes from the cheapest possible space in the purchasing in the market. No, not from Haymarket, but from these three spaces. Uh, and they will then put them into Haymarket. Uh, if they're if they're white cubes, then that's a uh, wild card, and they can take th we you can take three of any color from the cheapest possible bin. Finally, if there is a P in the in the space, then that means um, 
effectively the work the the factory has managed to run um effectively both um both streams i guess uh and so they gain their their bonus partner much like i would do if i ran both of my um both of my factories uh they will gain their extra partner from a supply uh okay so as we're doing an appeal order we're going to start with Forsham. and let's roll some d6s let's pick these up no both of them there we go and this is 1875 obviously the first round we've rolled a six so six is a hundred dollars and an increase on the track and a brown cube so take the brown cube put it into hate market let's just try and keep these grouped up to make it easier uh so the hundred dollars um i don't own any of Florsham's shares so we don't need to worry about that side of it but for the stock bump Florsham, that's double so they take a two step they go from 40 to 60. okay um next is bbc so this is us and i am going to Let's see, so I'm going to tap that to take two brown cubes from up here. I'm going to pay, oh, I need to pay $10 to do that. That's my $10. I'm definitely going to forget to do that one round. I'm going to pay $20. And in fact, I'm going to pay $40 and take both of those blues let's face it i'm going to need one next round so that's the 40 paid i've still got 30 left um i am going to i am going to buy that brown as well that's going to empty out empty out that spot which i'll refill once i finish my turn off so um now i need to run my factory so i've got my two browns and my blue Just come back up here uh and that's going to get me two goods Place these here. That's a hundred dollars. No, that's not a hundred dollars at all. It's hundred and sixty dollars. Not getting any bonus, but that's fine. Um, is there anything else I've forgotten? No, nope, hundred sixty dollars. So just to make sure I don't make any mistakes, as I'm sure I will, um, I have got a little spreadsheet here just to help me keep track because talking to you guys and playing the game and attempting to you know maybe do okay at the game and doing maths i think is slightly incompatible um i'm gonna get one of those things wrong and i would hate for it to be the maths because that would be quite embarrassing so um uh so i've got a little spreadsheet here so i've paid out 160 um i have four shares so I should be getting 64. Um, and that means there's 96 going back to the uh, to the company. And I don't have that on on my little spreadsheet. And so therefore that's going to be the thing I'm going to get wrong. So 64 is a dividend to me. And... 96 to the company so that's 80 that's 90 so i'll change these four fives to a 20 i'll just keep changing up in fact you know what if that was 96 and i already had a 10 in there and that's gonna come out as a hundred 
and six. Okay, so that is my company run. Oh, um, what I didn't do. <laughs> I'm going to forget that every turn. So, um, coming back to here. Uh, Florsham. Oh, that's right. Florsham's on the... Um, Florsham's wasn't bold, so he would only fill up half this track, but you run round down, so obviously that means he doesn't fill anything, so there's no change to the demand. My demand up here is fine. I need to remember to move my share, so obviously I did more than double, because I did 160, and my share price is 40. So I'm just going to move up two spots, so I'm now in the 60 spot, ready to do a nice triple jump next time, hopefully. Um, okay, so next is Cracker Jack. So let's roll Cracker Jack's dice. See how we do. Cracker Jack gets a nine, which is $130. And a blue. Oh, I should have moved these down. And drawn three more out of the bag. There you go. Take out the bag. Uh, no, no. So Cracker Jack has bought the blue. Comes here, and he paid 130, but I don't own any shares in him, so the money doesn't go anywhere. So, but it is bold, so that means he is going to fill up this track. Now they don't get the bonus, but it just fills up the track, so it's kind of implicit in the in the amount of money that you've got. The bold ones that they're, um, that the bonus is built into that. So, uh, 130 for Cracker Jack. That's clearly more than double 35. So he's coming up here. So he makes his double jump, and that's it for Cracker Jack. Then, finally, we've got DBH, and so for DBH. We roll the dice and roll a five, which is 80. Uh, that's interesting. So, again, I don't have any shares in it. It's a pink, so the pink comes off and comes over here. And it is not in bold. And their shoes, so again, they're not going to change anything on the demand track. $80 is more than our $50 spot. Um, so he's going to bump once, but it's not uh, enough to bump twice. So he, uh, CJ is going to stay on 60. And that is it for the, for the operating phase. Um, cool. So the next phase is cleanup. And cleanup is pretty much the same as usual, except you take the two tile uh, cubes from... The cleanup spot if there are any and you put them back into the haymarket. Uh we're gonna burn that move down. For three, because it's end of the decade still. Uh that's two blacks and a brown if it's not clear. Then, so we've done that, discard this, move these down. Um, let me clear off these cards, stays, this clears off. Move over. Pull that up. And then we return our partners. Through the relevant player boards. And 
we set these round. Okay, so that's the end of the that's the end of the first round. Um, I hope that all made sense and you and you could follow what was what was going on. Um, yeah, so basically the 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 subsequent rounds are all going to follow the same kind of playthrough. Um, it gets slightly more complex in terms of what happens on the on the tables, but mostly it's just a case of um, the 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 range gets bigger more than anything else. It's not actually um, a, a, a vast step up in complexity. So hopefully you found this this video useful, just in showing you how the solo variant plays through. Um, in the next video, I'll continue playing through and finish off the game, and then have a discussion on um how i feel the ai plays and how it how it impacts the game how it feels compared to a normal single player version of the game but i hope you found this useful um if you did i'd be very grateful if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel and i hope to see you next time okay cheers bye bye